They say that time spent fishing isn't counted against your life. That's why pretty near every weekend, I'm in the truck headed for the woods. If it's true, I expect to live to be about, ah, uh, 300. The wonderful thing about living away from the big city is the chance it gives the children to learn about nature. The animals, all the different birds, the different kinds of trees. To have the forest so close, well, I wouldn't live anywhere else. Life is hectic in Vancouver, but I like to get away whenever I can. I watch a lot of news and I often wonder whether we're taking good care of our province. Are we being good stewards? I've worked for the Forest Service for 11 years. Our forests provide me with a living and my family with a place to camp and fish and enjoy the outdoors. I want our forest to provide the same things for my children's children. The Forest Service of British Columbia is responsible for managing our most valuable resource, our forests. Managing means many things. It means determining when a forest is harvested and how it is replanted to ensure its continuation. Management means maintaining roads and recreation sites so that all citizens can enjoy our wild places. It means research to ensure that we understand the complex processes at work. And management means protecting our forests from damage by powerful forces like fire, disease, and insect pests. Of these many responsibilities, one which is often controversial and misunderstood is pest management. The forest manager's ongoing battle with natural enemies, such as destructive insects. Pest management may involve insecticides and aerial treatments, words that make people feel uncomfortable. So what are the facts about pest management? Pardon me for asking, but I'm curious why we spray insects at all. Aren't these insects there naturally? Or have we done something to make it worse? Insects are a natural part of the forest, as natural as the trees themselves. One example is the spruce budworm. Based on its name, you'd expect that it would attack spruce trees. But here in BC, it usually attacks one of our most important trees, the Douglas fir. During budworm outbreaks, the insects can cause serious damage to the forest by destroying new growth and even killing trees. In an outbreak, there must be billions of budworms in the forest. How can you kill them all? Killing all the insects is not possible, nor is it our aim. Our motto is control the damage, not the insect. Our aim is to reduce the insect population to a level that minimizes the damage until the outbreak, which is cyclical, finishes. You mentioned insecticides. Aren't insecticides poison? An insecticide is simply a substance used to control insects. It is lethal to them, but not necessarily to us or to many other kinds of animals. In fact, much of our research is aimed at finding the most specific insecticide. By specific, we mean a substance that attacks the insect we want attacked, and as few others as possible. But aren't insecticides chemicals? I don't want my children exposed to toxic chemicals. Yes, some insecticides are chemical based, but the one that we use most often for spruce budworm and other insects, like the introduced gypsy moth, is not a chemical at all. It is one of the simplest life forms on the planet, and one that has been around as long as the spruce budworm, and that's millions and millions of years. You mean this is sort of a natural insecticide? Exactly. We use a bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. We call it BT for short, and BT is one of our best weapons for controlling the damage that spruce budworms do. This bacterium occurs naturally throughout much of the Northern Hemisphere. In fact, it's very likely that all of you have been exposed to BT during your visits to the forest. But I spend a lot of time fishing, and I cannot recall a single occasion when one of my buddies has said, hey, isn't that a BT? That's because bacteria are microscopic in size. A large one might be only one one hundredth of a millimeter in length. We all know that some bacteria cause disease, but we often don't realize that other bacteria can be of great use to man. Bacteria are used in sewage treatment, in making cheese and beer. Bacteria in our own body produce vitamin K and some B vitamins. Quite simply, BT is a bacterium that is toxic to spruce budworms. 
Now you've got me curious. I know BT has been around for quite a while, and we're using it more and more. Why is that? BT has been around for a long time. In fact, it was first used commercially in the United States in the 1950s. It was first tested in field trials in BC in 1960. It has long been the chosen treatment in areas where there was great concern for the environment. For a long time, however, it was more expensive and not as effective as many of the chemical sprays. But now, new formulations have improved its effectiveness. Every indication is that we will use BT more and other treatments less. What makes BT so great? How does the Forest Service measure effectiveness? And how can we be sure that the long-term effects are not bad? Put simply, we measure effectiveness the way anyone else would. Does the treatment do what we want it to do, and nothing else? BT scores very high using this measure. It reduces the spruce budworm population to a size where the damage to the forest is minimal and acceptable, and it does not damage other crucial components of our environment. While no one can guarantee the long-term effects of anything, we are very confident about BT. We've used BT near cities, wetlands, and even, in cooperation with BC Parks, in a provincial park. It is used to control mosquitoes and, by some organic gardeners, to control insects on cold crops. BT has, after all, been tested for over 30 years and found to be harmless to man, birds, fish, and other wildlife. It is even harmless to most other insects, including the very valuable ones, like bees, who pollinate our flowers and our crops. I've wondered about that. Why doesn't it kill other insects? Unlike the forest chemical sprays, which kill on contact, BT must be eaten to work. So only those insects which feed on the sprayed areas ingest the bacteria. And of these, only those with an alkaline stomach are affected. We and most other animals have an acid stomach. A simplified explanation of how BT works. Inside the bacteria are spores and a crystal-shaped protein. When the budworm feeds on foliage which has been sprayed, the bacteria enter the gut and, aided by the larva's digestive enzymes, begin to grow. In the course of this rapid growth, the gut lining is ruptured and the budworm dies. When the host dies, the BT stops reproducing and begins to form spores and crystals again. The final step is the return of the bacteria to the dormant stage, the same stage it was in when it was sprayed, or when it was naturally occurring in the forest soil. BT sounds like it has a lot going for it. Are there no disadvantages? Yes, there are disadvantages. Because BT must be eaten to be effective, the treatment must take place when the budworm larvae are feeding. This means that BT is only effective when used during a fairly narrow time period of only a few weeks. It's during this window of time that the larvae are in their most active and destructive feeding stage, or INSTAR, as entomologists call stages of larval development. This means planning and timing are more difficult with BT, but it's well worth the price when the forest is at stake. There are other disadvantages. While BT is very specific in terms of controlling only certain insects, it is lethal to most butterflies and moths. This, however, is balanced off when you consider what the effects of a defoliated forest are on these same insects. Remember, we're controlling the damage, not the insect. BT is more expensive to use than the chemical-based insecticides, and it breaks down rapidly under sunlight, making its effects only temporary. I'm concerned about how you apply BT. I wander out in the woods a lot because that's where the good fishing is. And I don't like the idea of being up to my waist in some stream where the planes come buzzing over. I can tell you that's not a problem. I know from my job how long it takes for the pest management team to carefully plan and undertake one of their spray programs. It's never something that just happens. That's right. Implementing a pest management spray program takes a long time because of the thorough planning that's required. A special application must be made well in advance, which details the reasons for spraying and the exact methods to be used. The application is based on a complex decision-making process that carefully analyzes the problem 
and evaluates the possible solutions in terms of their likely success and their potential impact on the environment and human activities. Federal and provincial environment authorities then review this application, a process that can take half a year. Issuing the permit is not automatic. There are several steps, one of which allows for public input into the decision-making process. And if an application doesn't meet all the requirements, it's rejected. Once a permit is granted, however, there's still lots to do. The details are innumerable, including reconnaissance flights over the spray area, establishing test plots, checking weather conditions, checking the spray formulation and aircraft, establishing buffer areas and monitoring the effects of the spray. The BC Ministry of Environment permit requires that a report must be prepared on the effects and effectiveness of the project. Pardon me for asking, but if BT is so safe, why all the precautions? Because Canada and British Columbia have strict environmental laws which preserve our quality of life. BT's first class safety record is only one more element in protecting our environment. If these precautions seem like overkill, it is better always to err on the side of safety. Now you've got me curious. How can I find out more about BT? Just contact the nearest office of the Ministry of Forests. They'll provide you with material on BT and on other aspects of forest management. Okay. The forests of British Columbia are everybody's business. The Forest Service manages this resource for your benefit. Take time to find out what we're doing and why. We look forward to hearing from you.